Hello and welcome to the Startup Screen Printing Podcast. My name is Jesse and you're listening to episode four. Today I want to talk about the comparison, the the big issue or, uh, you know, two sides of screen printing that everybody knows about. And if you've looked in any screen printing at all and you're just getting started, you know that there is Team Plastisol and Team Waterbase. Now, if you've watched any of my videos or know anything about me, then you know that I print water-based ink only. It's a decision that I made when I started my company, and I do not regret it. There have been struggles that it has caused for me, sure, but I don't plan to ever change. So I'm always going to be a water-based shop. But that doesn't mean it's the right decision for you. So let's talk about some main areas, some different uh, comparison topics to help you decide whether you want to give water base a shot or whether you want to give Plastisol a shot and which one you want to go with your business or maybe you want to do both. So if you're just getting started, these are just some areas that I think are important to consider when it comes to making this decision. One of them is going to be cost. The other is ease of use. And the other is the final result. So let's start with the cost. Which one costs more? Well, it's easy. It's water base. Water base ink costs more than Plastisol ink. Um, especially thanks to uh, the efforts of FN Inc. over the last couple of years um, coming out with ink that is even labeled as financially necessary, um, marketed as being more affordable for your shop. That's a great benefit of Plastisol. It is more affordable. Water-based is more expensive. In fact, I charge more for my prints than probably a Plastisol shop would. And I tell my customers that, hey, I'm probably going to be more expensive because I do water-based ink only. Plastisol is cheaper, so another shop might be cheaper than me, and I'm okay with that. So water-based is, is, is more expensive. Plastisol is cheaper. Something to know going into this. Um, the chemicals and your water-based ink options are more limited. So I use Green Galaxy inks. There are other inks out there that are water-based inks. I've never used them, and I haven't found that they are as easily to as sorry as easy to acquire. I, you know, there's um, Matsui, I think, is one uh, ink company that's water-based. I, I've struggled to find a place to to buy those inks from, um, and knowing that they're you know water-based, so they're more expensive anyways. I've stuck with Green Galaxy because it's what I started with. And they've worked well for me. I haven't had any issues out of them, so I don't have any reason to change. Um, but just know that your options are a little more limited with, with water-based than they are Plastisol. There are more Plastisol companies out there and more companies selling Plastisol ink. Um, the chemicals, same thing. There are more chemical options out there for Plastisol, and there are less for water-based. Um, same thing with emulsions. There are more emulsion options there are more limited ones with water base. You do have to use a certain type of emulsion with water base. Um, it is a more expensive emulsion with water base. It is a little less forgiving than a regular Plastisol friendly emulsion. So things to keep in mind because your expenses will be higher with water based ink. Now, what about, let's skip to the end result. Your expenses are more. Is it worth it in the end result? I think it is. I think that there are some shops creating some really phenomenal prints with with Plastisol. I'm not going to I'm not going to act like that's not happening. I mean, there's some really great prints coming out. Even, I mean, you guys have I'm sure have seen the prints that guys like Golden Press and uh, Rogue Studios are coming out with and they're they're just phenomenal and most of them are Plastisol prints. So, it's not like the result is bad. But I like the feel of a water-based print. I like that when I buy a really nice, thin, tri-blend shirt, that I'm getting a shirt that it, I don't feel like is compromised by the print. I feel like it's enhanced by the print or that the shirt and the print complement each other. With Plastisol, especially depending on the color that you're printing, how many layers, whether it's an underbase, et cetera, it can, it can end up being a pretty thick print. Um, Plastisol sits on top of the fibers of the shirt. Water base soaks into the fibers of the shirt. So sometimes with a nice water based print, you can't even tell. If you close your eyes and rub your hand over the shirt, you can't tell where the print starts because you're feeling the fibers of the shirt. If it's a really thin print, then you just can't tell. And I love that. I think that keeps the integrity of the nice premium apparel. Um, again, there are things you can do with Plastisol to create a soft hand. 
Um, and so you can really come out with a really nice feeling print. And if it's something like a black ink, it's going to be thinner, more breathable. It's, it's not going to be as thick a, you know, we always call it a billboard, you know, a sweaty billboard. You think of that shirt that has a really big back print and it's a hot day and it just sticks to your back. That's a plastisol print. Um, so it, I don't like the end result. I think a water-based print produces a more premium end result. Um, but there are scenarios like if you plan to print a lot of athletic teams, if you plan to plan to print jerseys and things, um, a lot of times a plastisol print is even preferred in those scenarios. It gives the more athletic appearance that they're going for because a lot of times those those athletic jerseys are either uh, you know embroidery or um, uh, heat press, vinyl, things like that. So a plastisol kind of fits in with that with that look. And that's okay. So if that's if that's your model, if that's the the audience that you're going after, then that's something to keep in mind. Plastisol might be better for you, um, but for me, I'm going after more retail shops. I print for a lot of local retail companies, um, whether it's coffee shops and restaurants, things like that, that are actually selling their apparel to an end customer um, in a, in inside of their retail location, and so they appreciate the really nice premium water-based prints that I provide. So. Water-based is more expensive, plastisol is cheaper. I feel like water-based produce, produces a better end result, but you can still get great end results with plastisol. So still have an option to make a decision there. Don't feel like one is better than the other. It works better for me. Usability, though. That, this is a key one. Which one is going to be more user-friendly for you? And I don't think that there's a blanket answer for everyone who's getting into screen printing. I think there are things to consider that could prove to be more beneficial for you or more detrimental for you. So what are those? Well, water-based dries, obviously. It air dries. It's gonna, it, it can dry in your screen. If you are in a dry climate like I'm in, I'm in Colorado. If you are in an area, you know, and especially in the wintertime when the heat uh, actually dries out the, the air in your house, you're going to have an issue with water-based drying in your screen more often. You can't, with plastisol, you don't have to worry about it drying. In fact, you can step away from a print and leave the ink in the screen and come back uh, days later, weeks later, and that ink is not going to have dried in the screen. You can go right back to printing. Now, you're going to have things like dust and lint and things settle on it, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. But the point here is that you can it's not going to dry in the screen and cause any issues. Water-based, if you step away from your print to go use the restroom, you could have some drying in your screen that could, could uh, you know, cause some issues that delay you getting back to production um, once you return. So for me, I print when I'm printing in the night, at, in weeknights and weekends, um, aside from, you know, I have a day job, so I print nights and weekends. Sometimes I'll start printing before my daughter goes to bed and I'll have to take a break and go put her to bed. And I, I, have, to, I have to know that when I do that, I need to make sure that I've either you know, sprayed some water in the screen or that I've cleaned the screen totally out or just know that when I come back, I may have to do some test prints again to get the ink flowing again and to get that ink that started to dry, get it uh, moisturized again so that it can actually go through the screen and I can get back to printing. So they're just things to keep in mind when it, when it comes to cleaning it up. I mean, when you step away from a, from a, from the press in the evening or whenever you're done printing, or maybe it's in the middle of a job, you've got to clean that screen out totally. If it's water-based ink, you, all that ink needs to come out of the screen um, so that you can then come back to it at a later time. With plastisol, you can, like I said, you leave it in there. It's not a big deal. You don't have to totally clean it. I obviously recommend that you do totally clean it. Always clean your stuff. Um, but just know that you, you don't have to. It's not if something, emergency happens, you step away. It's not a big deal. You can come back to it. It's, it's not going to be an issue. But uh, water-based, it is. So something to keep in mind, especially if you're going to be printing in a garage and you have the outdoor environment um, that's a little closer to you. It's a little more, your, your, your print area is a little more susceptible to what's going on outdoors. You need to keep that in mind and you need to remember that that could cause some issues with your with your ink. So, you know, if you want to do live printing at, on location for things, maybe water base is not best for you because it is going to, um, it's going to have more variables as it comes to that. You can still do live printing with water base. I've seen it done many times. Um, but plastisol is easier to do with when live printing. 
because it doesn't dry out no matter the environment. Um, so it's, it's easier, you know, when you're starting off, you're moving slowly, you know, you just got to keep, keep aware that water base is, is going to dry if you're not getting back to that quickly. So it, you have to keep that in mind. You have to always clean your screens out. But what about uh, ease of use as it comes to cleaning? You know, Plastisol, if you get a mistake on a shirt or you get the ink on you, um, or even when it comes to cleaning, you're using some pretty harsh chemicals to clean that stuff. And the Plastisol itself is pretty harsh and is really hard to get off of you. I mean, it's hard to get off your skin. It's really hard to get off your clothing, um, if not impossible, without uh, the, um, there's a, a little squirt gun that you can get that's like a high pressure, really fine stream when you put a chemical in it and you spray out. You can spray out a, an ink uh, splotch or, you know, a mistake in the, in the print that way, but it's, it's just not easy and it's not great. So, but with water base, you get that on your hands, you can get that off. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to get off with just some regular dish soap. Um, you're also not using super harmful chemicals. You're using, I'm using eco-friendly chemicals. So I feel better about having that in my home and not having the harsh chemicals knowing my family's upstairs and there's fumes and things like that. I want to have something that's more eco-friendly. So water base is, is great for me. Um, so it's easier to get out. If I, I've, I've printed mistake shirts and I've taken those up to the sink or um, my washout booth and, you know, if it's like a little speck or something, wash that out in the sink or I've, I've even had to spray off an entire shirt spray off the entire print and let that shirt dry and start over. And it worked out great. And, or I've printed, cured one, it came back around. I didn't re remember that I'd already cured it and I moved it and I printed again and it, you know, it double printed and it was a mistake, but I was able to take that over to my washout booth and spray out the mistake because it wasn't cured and the cured portion remained. And once that shirt dried, you could not tell the difference of which one I had made the mistake on and which one was a totally perfect shirt. So that's a great thing. And for me, that, that was great for getting started and making mistakes. So I knew I could wash it out. And, um, you know, I appreciated that part. But with Plastisol, um, you know, you just don't have that luxury. So I think there are benefits to both. I think the fact that you can, you don't have to be in a rush, not that you have to be in a rush with water-based, but you got to be more, uh, more active with water-based um, than you do with Plastisol. You can print one, go do something else, come back an hour later and print more, and that's no big deal. And if that's your situation, if that's, uh, if that's a scenario that you think you'll find yourself in often, then you probably need to start off with, water, with uh, Plastisol inks. You probably need to start off with that so that you don't always have the headache of having to clean out a screen or risk the ink locking up in the screen and having a terrible time getting it out and, and having to start over when, it, when you start printing again. But if you are going to be able to spend some time, you're going to be in a little more controlled environment, you're not going to be you know, close to the outdoors, I think water base is a great option. I think it gives a great end result, and I think it's more than doable for anyone in any situation if you're willing to put in a little extra work and know that you've got to wash that screen out, you've got to clean it out if you step away, um, and you've got to stay active um, as it pertains to printing and keep that ink moving in the screen um, so that it doesn't dry out. Now, I don't want you to think that it dries out super quick. And white ink, yeah, it does. It dries pretty quickly um, if you're not active. And I, by pretty, pretty quickly, I mean, you know, you've printed 30 or 40 shirts, you're going to notice some thickening of the ink. Um, most of the other ink colors, no big deal. I mean, you can print 100 shirts before you start to really notice some thickening. As long as you're continuing to add ink to the screen as you're printing and that mixing some fresh ink with the ink that's already in the screen, then you're not going to have an issue. And I don't think that it's going to dry as quickly as you think it is or that you might be worried that it is. So I think it's a viable option for anyone who wants to do screen printing. So I'm going to encourage you to give Waterbase a try. Whether you start off with Plastisol and that fits your situation better, at least get some Waterbase and, and give it a try and see if it's something that you can switch over to. I think shops would be better if everyone did Waterbase. I think that's, um, I think that's the future. I think that's what customers are going to want as we move forward with printing. Um, but it's okay to do water-based. I mean, it's, I'm sorry, it's okay to do Plastisol. It, don't feel bad if that's the path that you need to go and it makes sense for you. That's okay. You're going to do great and you're going to have some great prints. 
But if you know, like I do, that you are willing to do whatever it takes and you are going to make water base work, I think you can do it. And I want to help you do it. So hopefully the information I'm providing you is encouraging you to do it, encouraging you to give water base a try. Um, but or, you know, at the, under the same breath, I hope you're also encouraged that it's OK to do plastic saw. It's OK to not do water base or it's OK to do both. Um, whatever you decide is totally fine. Just start printing, um, you know, just start printing shirts and learning this tr this craft and, and getting your business off the ground because um, that's what's most important. So get really good at one of them. Do, do one of them or both of them, but get really good at one and then switch, you know, at Plastic Saw and then switch to Water Base. Or get really good at Plastic Saw and then do Water Base for some more premium stuff or just for your own stuff. Um, but do whatever it takes just to get started. Don't let the decision of one or the other hold you back. Try both. Um, but if you want to go Water Base, do it. I think it's worth it. Um, all right, that's it for this episode. I'm going to keep it quick, uh, as, as quick. That may not be quick. I think we're at, you know, 16 minutes here. So not totally quick, but um, I think it's worth giving a shot. Let me know what you think. If you've given it a try and it hasn't worked for you, what were the issues you ran into? Or if it's worked, great. What's your situation? What's your environment? I would love to hear it so we can share that with the community so that others can be encouraged by that. Um, or maybe Plastic Saw is great for you and you are very strong opinion as to why you want to stick with it. That's great too. I'd love to hear it. There are reasons to stick with plastic saw. I believe that. Um, but for me, water base is better. So let me know what you think. If you're not subscribed on YouTube, please do so. Same thing here on the podcast. Please subscribe if you're not already. Follow me on Instagram at Startup Screen Printing. I want to hear from you. Let me know how you're doing and how I can help. I'm trying to bring you information that I think is going to be helpful for you based on where I started and what I've experienced. But if you have something you're facing right now, I want to know about it so that I can help you find a solution to whatever you're facing and help you grow in your business and your experience and your craft of screen printing. Um, I want to help you get there. So let me know how I can help you. Until then, uh, see you in the next episode and future videos. And I hope you have a great day.